All right, yeah, welcome back. So this is part eight of chapter five. This is the answer yeah, that we got. Okay, so this uh, exercise was only to demonstrate this using a timeline. Yeah? So it's the same answer. All right. Uh, next, we look at uh, how this can be solved using spreadsheet or the financial calculator. Yeah? And for this, you need to look at the, you need to note the sign convention here, yeah? or you must follow the sign convention, as you will see. Yeah? Right, first we look at how this problem can be solved uh, using the spreadsheet. Yeah? Now again, the four known uh, the three known elements yeah, in these four elements in a basic time value of money problem is this: the present value. Note this, yeah, is five thousand. But you need to put a negative here yeah, because it's a deposit that you make now. Yeah, and then the second element that you uh, <coughs> that is required in the spreadsheet is payment. Yeah, here, but you just put that as zero because this is not. Uh, relevant for this chapter. Yeah? It's relevant for the next chapter. We'll come to that later. Now the third, uh, the second element that is known is time. Yeah? 17 years. Okay, So you can put that as 17, 17 periods and future value. Note that this is positive. Yeah? 75,000. This is negative and this is positive. This is what you deposit now and this is what you get after 17 years. Alright, now you want to solve for the rate. Yeah. So for this, you just put equal to, you know, the formula here or the function. Yeah? We call this a function in Excel or on spreadsheet. Equal to, then rate. Yeah? Rate stands for R in the formula. <coughs> so rate here refers to R. Yeah? Rate and then open bracket. Then it tells you the sequence in which the values should appear. Yeah? So first should be number of periods. Yeah? Number of periods is time here, 70. Or R5, yeah, R column R row 5, yeah, this cell, yeah, you can click on the cell. Then the second value would be the payment, which is zero. You can type zero or you can type the cell which has the value zero for payment. And then uh, the third uh, value would be present value or uh, the negative, yeah, you can type in negative 5000 or you can click in, yeah the cell R2 which has the value negative 5000 then 6 uh, the, uh, the next yeah would be the future value yeah future value which is 75000 you can write that as 75000 or you can click on R6 here yeah? so it has that value then note that here i have closed the bracket yeah there are two more elements here yeah type okay as i mentioned you can type that as zero Okay, zero means the cash flow occurs at the, excuse me, at the end of the period. Yeah? Okay, but if it is one, then it's at the beginning. But this will, uh, it's not relevant for this chapter. Yeah? It's more relevant for the next chapter. We'll discuss that in uh, chapter six. Okay, then next you find that there is a guess yeah, here. Guess here relates to uh, a rate that you uh, are going to ask the uh, computer yeah, or the spreadsheet here to try first. Okay, the computer actually tries the rate yeah, rather than solving it deterministically. It uses an algorithm yeah, and then it improves on the algorithm. Yeah. It keeps improving until it gets a very uh, good answer yeah, which cannot be improved anymore. Yeah. Therefore, you can put a guess rate or you can just leave it blank. Yeah. The computer will uh, choose a rate at random. Okay, and then uh, it can do it on its own. Yeah? So because computer does the computation so quickly, it gives you the answer almost immediately. Yeah? Alright, so if you once you finish all that, then you close the bracket and you click yes. Okay, the value is here, yeah, 17.2686%. Okay, uh, usually this will be given in terms of decimal. Yeah? The rate will be given in terms of decimal, but you can display this in terms of percentage. Yeah? Alright, that's how you use the spreadsheet yeah, to uh, get the answer. Yeah? Now let's see how you can use the uh, financial calculator application. Yeah? Let's look. Right, now we are trying to solve this uh, same problem using the financial calculator application. Yeah? Note that here it should be negative 5000. 
Okay, remember the sign convention because the deposit of five thousand. There is no payment. Okay, we'll come to payment in chapter six. Yeah, so we leave that as zero. Our future value is seventy five thousand. Okay, the rate is what you want to solve. Yeah, and the period is seventeen years. Okay, now notice yeah, this must be. Annual, yeah, annually, yeah. Compounding is annually, that means 17 years, yeah. Now you want to solve for rate after you have put in the three known values. This is 5000 negative, this is 75,000 uh, future value, and this is n, yeah, 17. So the unknown is the rate, you just click on the rate, okay. And it takes, did you notice that it takes some time before this rate appears, yeah, because the system will do iterations. It doesn't solve this deterministically. Yeah? It uses an algorithm to self, uh, solve this. So it takes some time. Yeah? But you note that it's 17.269, yeah? which is the same answer as we have got earlier. Okay, in percentage, this is in percentage, 17.269. Yeah? So it, that's how you get this answer. Yeah? Alright, let's uh, go back to the slides now. Yeah, so we have uh, almost completed the third part of this chapter, yeah, which is to solve for the unknown interest rate. Yeah, so let's do a quick uh, review yeah, of this third part. What are some situations in which you might want to know the implied interest rate? This is when you know the future value and you know the present value and you know the term. Okay. That you do not know the interest rate in that investment, yeah. Then, then therefore, you can solve for this, yeah. So, any situation where you know the future value, the present value of an investment or a borrowing, and uh, you know the term, yeah, but you do not know the interest rate, then this falls into this category, yeah. All right, so uh, let's do a quick quiz here. You are offered the following investments, okay. Uh, one, you can invest $500 today and receive $600 in five years. The investment is considered low risk. Okay. Then, the second investment is you can invest the $500 in a bank account paying 4% interest per year. Yeah. So, the question is, what is the implied interest rate for the first choice, this choice here, and which investment should you choose? Now, we don't answer the first question yet. Yeah? We come to that a bit later. Which investment should you choose? <coughs> there are many ways of solving this <coughs> problem. Yeah? So we can uh, solve using many methods. Okay, the idea here is trying to solve for the implied interest rate here, and then compare this interest rate with this interest rate here. Yeah? Okay, so if the interest rate for this investment is lower than this investment, then you reject this and accept this because you always want to choose the investment that pays, yeah, that yields a higher interest rate. Okay, so let's try that. Yeah? So here, what are the known factors? $500 today, this is the present value, this is known. $600 in 5 years, this is the future value, this is known. The term is five years. Okay, so the third element is uh, the term. Now, what is unknown? The unknown is the interest rate. The interest rate is not known here. Yeah? Okay, for the second one, okay, you know that five hundred dollars. Okay, that is present value. Same here. The future value we do not know. Okay, for the second one, yeah, we do not know the future value, but we know the term. It's also five years for this. Yeah, it must be. Uh, equivalent yeah, five years because it's comparable yeah, five years and it pays four percent so this is known yeah three known elements here present value is known the term is known from here it's implied from here five years and the interest rate is known the unknown factor for the second uh, investment or the second the alternative investment is that you don't know the future value yeah so you can solve using uh, the interest rate for the first one. Yeah? But that, that is why this question says, what is the implied interest rate for the first choice? 
All right, so you can do it this way, 600 future value divided by present value, this raised to the power of 1 over 5, yeah, then you minus 1, you get 3.7137, note this, yeah, this is the in implied interest rate. That means if you invest $500 now and you receive yeah, $600 after 5 years, you would have earned only 3.7137, yeah, or 3.7. 714 percent per year for five years okay which is lower than this yeah because here if you invest that same amount in a bank account that pays four percent you get more you get four percent not this yeah all right so if you take the second year yeah? so you would say you will reject this and you will accept this yeah the second method of solving for this is to find the future value because future value is not known for the second option yeah so you find the future value for year five okay this is present value multiplied by one plus r raised to power five therefore you get six zero eight point three three this is the future value yeah now know that with this investment the future value is only six hundred yeah so this gives you a future value of six hundred and eight dollars and thirty three cents, which is higher, yeah. Therefore you will choose this and you reject this. Is that okay? So any method you use, whether you compute the future value for this or the implied interest rate for this, you will come to the same conclusion, yeah, which is to reject this investment because it doesn't pay you enough interest. And accept this investment because it gives you a higher yeah, future value after five years. All right. Yeah. So uh, that is how you solve this. Yeah. So we finish this uh, third part of the chapter. We move on to the fourth part. Yeah. The fourth part is when the number of periods is not known. Yeah. All the other factors are known, but the number of periods yeah, is not known. The term is not known. Yeah. So we start with the basic equation and solve for t, yeah? All right, so it says remember your logs, okay? You start with the basic equation. Now you want to solve for t, yeah? Because t is the exponential power, yeah, here. Therefore, you need to take the log, okay? If you take the log, then t, yeah, will become uh, this, yeah? If you take the log here, what happens is uh, you divide this first, yeah? Future value divided by present value. Both sides you divide by present value. You get that first. Then you take the log. Yeah, natural log. This is natural log. Ln stands for natural log on both sides. So you will have natural log of future value divided by present value. And you will have t. On this side you will have t. Then natural log of 1 plus r. Yeah, because when you take the natural log, this t becomes the coefficient. Yeah, t. Therefore, you divide, yeah, to get the value of t, you divide both sides by the natural log of 1 plus r, so you get this value, yeah, this is the formula. Okay, t is equals to natural log, okay, this is natural log, yeah, ln stands for natural log. In fact, you don't need to use natural log, yeah, you can use any uh, log, yeah, log to the base of 10 yeah, is also possible, yeah. right, but you must be consistent, if you use log to the, uh, to the base of 10, you should also use the same log here, yeah? log to the base of 10. If you use natural log, this must also be natural log. Okay, therefore, this is future value divided by present value. You take the natural log of this, then you take the natural log of 1 plus the interest rate. Okay, uh, then you take this divided by this, yeah? so you get the value of t. Yeah? Okay, again, when you're using the financial calculator or the spreadsheet, you must need the you must need to remember the sign convention. Yeah? Now let's look at this example. Okay, we'll just introduce the example in this clip and then we'll look at the solution yeah, in the next clip. Okay, so you want to purchase a new car and you are willing to pay 20,000. Yeah? You can invest at 10% per year and you currently have 15,000. How long will it be before you have enough money? To pay for uh, pay cash for the car yeah now notice what are the known elements again yeah one is twenty thousand yeah now this twenty thousand is the future value yeah after uh, how many years yeah okay that is what we do not know yeah we want to solve for the time how long this is future value 
and this is present value.